what is microsimulation? I think uh, many of you will know. It's basically a technique where you use a household survey that has information on family structure, on income and expenditure of the household. And then you bring these microdata to the policy system, which can be coded in different types of software. And basically, you take the social security code and the tax code to the data in order to know how much is the tax load on each family. And then you can, of course, bring that up with representatives' data to the national level so that you know the tax load, how will that come out as revenue for the government. But you also will know how much social protection costs the government. So this is important, of course, for government, but it's also very good information for research. Now, um, you can also then, given that you have such detailed data, look at a more specific questions like what type of household is paying how much, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, of course, you can have uh, look at specific measures that we all know, like poverty, distributional measures, progressivity of the tax system. The beauty of these models is there also that you can look at policy reform. So imagine you have a change in or you want to have a change in your tax code, um, you will change the tax function, and then you can look again at the tax loads and all these other indicators that I was just um, talking about uh, in terms of government revenue, but also progressivity of the tax system. And that's also um, where you, of course, have a first round effect, what we call a first round effect, in terms of um, effects not only in individuals, but on the government. And then, actually, the last bit that just came up takes it a step further. We're talking then about behavioral responses, and that's where research comes in. So the static model then can be taken by researchers as those you find sitting here, and we can start thinking about and answering more complex questions. So um, the Southmont project has developed, together with the teams in the local, uh, in our, all the countries that you see here, um, models for these countries, and also has um, revamped already existing models for Namibia and South Africa. So in the audience, there's quite a few mothers and fathers of the local tax benefit models, and it's, uh, it's great to see how well this is going. So here you see all the partners involved, um, and uh, we actually had a meeting yesterday pulling everyone together, sharing our experiences after the first round of model building. Um, now, these models, as I said, are nearly all finished. Um, we will update them all together and um, keep them up. Uh, we have trainings and launches happening, or they already happened, and they will happen in this year. And we are in the process of building an active user group, because these models will only be as good as we have an exchange going on between the policymaker side, the research side, and of course then the model developers. So um, this is very important for the models, and research is important to push the models for new innovation, as much as answering the more complex techniques that will, like questions of, for example, tax elasticity, which is one of the questions you can also partly use these models to um, will never just be answered by the model itself, it will always need a researcher who frames the question using more methods. So what we will see today is four applications of such models. Um, the first one uses the model for Ghana, so the Ghana model, and looks at the relationship between extending, uh, extending social protection and formality, so that's Yuka's presentation. The second paper uh, uses TASMOT, um, or am I now shifting? Yeah, the second one is on Tasmat. So it looks for Tanzania, how well beneficiaries are targeted and what could be reforms which would be, deliver a better result. Um, then the third one uses the South African model, South, uh, SAMOT, um, and analyzes a universal child benefit, a hypothetical reform, and how one could finance it. And finally, um, using the model for Ecuador, um, the last presenter will show how you can use such models to estimate vulnerability to poverty. 